You may have seen a pair of logging boots and noticed that they always have a pretty tall hill. And you wonder, well, why do logger boots have such a high hill? And what makes this particular pair of logging boots worth 650 bucks? Well, we cut it in half and we ran a bunch of tests on it to really see and explain why loggers have been wearing boots with a hill for over 400 years. And thanks to JK Boots for sponsoring this video. And to really tell the story of why they have a hill, we have to briefly go over the history of logging in the US. And it all started in 1607 when people started logging to start building the settlements in Jamestown and the surrounding towns and settlements over the next 100 years. And then by 1790, shipbuilding fueled the New England logging industry, and they were exporting 36 million feet of lumber and 300 ship masts to England per year. And then in 1830, the Industrial Revolution really reignited and fueled the lumber industry again. And because the US was settled east to west and because they were shipping so much to Europe, the forest in the eastern part of the United States is where they got a lot of the lumber, like Bangor, Maine, and the Great Lakes area. And then by 1848, the California gold rush moved a bunch of the logging industry way out west and to California and slowly worked its way up to the Pacific Northwest through Oregon and Washington, Idaho, as the eastern forests really began to dwindle because of how much they were over harvested. By 1862, the Homestead Act was enacted, which provided 160 acres of federal land to anyone who agreed to farm the land. And then the one thing that really sealed the deal and made the western side of the United States the logging capital of the world was the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. And even though logging had slowed down in the east, by the early 1900s, almost all the forests that were primed for logging had been completely depleted because they didn't quite understand how to take care of forests and manage them in the right way. And then by 1910, Idaho by itself was exporting 745 million board feet nationally. And to put that in perspective, in 1914, the logging industry provided 55% of all the payroll in the Pacific Northwest. And between 1945 and 1970, the Washington and Oregon logging industry harvest rate went, went from 5% to 50%, with 41% of all the lumber in the US coming from the Pacific Northwest. And then fast forward to the 1990s, and conservation acts caused the Pacific Northwest logging industry to fall by 90%. And this was to protect endangered species and more appropriately manage the resources resources, which you would assume would have completely killed this style of boot and killed the heritage and the skill and the knowledge to make the style of boot. But fast forward to 2023 and this style of boot is still wildly popular. And the crazy thing is only a small percentage of these boots being made today are being bought by loggers because they've been adopted by wildland firefighters, construction workers, and literally any job where you're on your feet all day and you need an ultra supportive and ridiculously durable boot. So I think it's a really cool story of how this style of boot has been around for nearly four centuries and is still alive and well today, still being made in the United States by hand by very skilled craftsmen and makers, still doing it the old fashioned way, hand lasting every single one of these pairs and putting them together nail by nail, layer by layer and hammer swing by hammer swing. But why the high hill? Now that we know the history, well in the Pacific Northwest, it's a completely different terrain than the initial logging that happened in the Eastern part of the United States it's a lot more flatter. The Pacific Northwest, it has crazy elevation, really sharp rocks, ridiculous uh, changes in elevation, and the terrain is just rough. So the hill helped keep loggers stable in uneven terrain, and while walking super uphill, that hill lifts them up so they're not overstraining their calves as they walk. And there's some ergonomic benefits to the shape of the foot that we'll go over during the construction, but also these became really popular with loggers because of this high hill. It basically acts as a giant lug. So anytime you're trying to get around through logs and rough terrain, this grips onto basically anything like a giant lug. And those wild dudes who would climb up those huge trees with just spikes mounted onto their boots, they locked in right at the hill, making them super safe, super secure as they climb those ridiculously large tree. And from the JK Boots perspective, we kind of asked their opinion on it and what they what the benefits are from their perspective. And they said, it's all about the arch support because the idea behind proper leather arch support is that it puts your foot in a proper resting position, distributing the weight of your body across the foot evenly, removing any and all pressure or stress from impacting your feet in the wrong positions and places and removing pressure from your ankles and knees. In addition to all this arch support, the guys at JK Boots says it does some really interesting things to your posture because they said it lifts up your back, 
unlocks your knees so the pressure is off of your knees and lower back and your posture is corrected because it'll force your chest out, your shoulders back, and putting you in a natural comfortable position for your body. But now to my favorite part, how they get that arch support in the boot. Because if from the outside, you would assume that this is just a big slant all the way down and that you're, as soon as you put these boots on, your toes would be crammed right to the end. They solve this problem by building up nine layers of leather to support your arch and prevent you from sliding right to the end of the boot. There's four layers of leather that are tapered down at the heel. Then it goes to a ridiculously thick slab of veg tan all the way through the midsole. Then it goes up to a leather shank that helps prevent the boot from collapsing at the heel. Then above that, you've got the full length leather insole that slowly compresses the shape of your foot, giving you like a concrete handprint or footprint inside of the boot that gives it all the comfort and you have a sock liner on top of that. But you might notice that's eight layers of leather because the ninth layer is sandwiched in between the shank and the insole and that's really where the magic happens because that little sliver of leather builds up the arch in a way that it perfectly contours your foot arch and gives it something to grip onto while you're compressing the leather to the shape of your foot, giving you that footprint and compressing the arch so that you end up with a boot after like three months that when you slide it in, it like your foot pops into place and there's a perfect footprint. And it's such a unique feeling if you have, if you have never owned a pair of boots like this. But all this leather and the durability and the arch support really means nothing if the upper wears out before the rest of the boot. So in most like leather boots that you see, casual boots, they're anywhere from like 1.5 millimeters up to 2.5 at the most. But these boots, they come in at a whopping three to 3.5 millimeters, which makes them a complete trial of, of will to break them in compared to like a pair of sneakers. But you'll notice that this pair of boots that we already have cut in half is quite unique because it's made of bison leather. This stuff comes in at 3.5 to four millimeters thick. It's the thickest leather we've ever seen in a boot by like a whole millimeter. And you might think, well, that's gotta feel like casts walking around in these boots because of the leather, how thick it is. But the wild thing about bison leather is it's super malleable and it's super soft and it's because it's tumbled and because of the pebbling effect on top here, creates almost natural break points in the leather that you don't have to form yourself. And I'm honestly not exaggerating. Like I know this is a sponsored video and all, but I'm not exaggerating when I say this leather is easier to break in than 90% of like the heritage style boots that I've ever worn. And you might be wondering, well, does that ruin the durability of this leather? Well, we did the rattlesnake bike test and it took 128 pounds to puncture through. Put that compared to all the other boots that we've done the puncture test on and it's pretty impressive. And there's tons of conditioners and tanning compounds worked into the leather, making it a very almost saturated leather. So you really don't have to condition these nearly as much as even some of their other leathers. So what's the catch? Well, it is $75 more to get the bison leather and it's heavier because it is four millimeters thick and it's saturated, so it is a heavier leather. And I don't really know how this leather wears over time. Bison has a lot of claims of being some of the strongest leather in the world, but I've never owned a pair of boots like this for an extended period of time. But it seems like it's a really unique way to solve a lot of the problems that thicker leather has inherently. And they also do a lot of really crazy things aside from the leather. Like they put on the V100, the luggiest Vibram outsole. They sew through literally an inch of material stitching together the upper, the midsole, and the outsole. There's like 10 screws throughout this entire outsole, including in the heel. It takes 324 pounds to puncture all the way through to the inside of the boot. There's the internal Blake stitch sewing all the internal bits together, and each of those layers have contact cement gluing them together. And the crazy thing is there's almost 100 nails per boot driven in through all these layers, and they're not just normal nails, they're little clinch nails that when they hit the last, they clinch over and hook into the leather, making them nearly impossible to tear apart. I've torn apart some of these boots. They're not easy. So they're, they're just a ridiculously overbuilt, over the top, the most durable boots that money can buy. So now let's cut these boots in half. This one's already obviously cut. This boot though, we're gonna cut like uh, perpendicular to this one so you can get a full view of how this boot is structured and all the way through cross section and see if there's anything we missed on the inside.
This turned out so cool. Wait till you guys see this. Okay, I got it cut in half. Let's see what's inside. Beautiful opening. This is so wild. I, I don't know how we've never cut apart a boot like this in this way. But look how cool this is. You can see right, right here, we cut it through the arch. You can see that built up arch support and you can see at the heel here, we cut the heel perfectly in half. You can see all those layers built up and how they all contour together and the construction. And the really cool thing is look at the counter. Look how thick and how that counter cups your heel. So do they live up to the 400 years of history? To me, I, they've got to be better than what they were making 400 years ago, probably 200 years ago. And it's really crazy that so many years later, somehow this heritage and this lineage of making boots in this way is still alive and well in the 21st century. And that's why I was so excited to do this video and really dive into the history of the Pacific Northwest, um, the logging industry, because it's my personal favorite style of boot, because I just love when things get taken to the absolute tippity top quality, the most rugged, the most durable. How far can you take a boot and still consider it a boot and still wear it? And this is that prime example. It's just an extremist view on boots. And that's why I love doing these videos. And that's why I get so excited when I do them. I think that's enough of me geeking out about these boots. And I hope that I've represented the industry and the history and what these boots really are accurately and uh, in an interesting way, because I love I love making this video. So thank you guys for your support. Thanks to JK Boots for sponsoring this video. Check out their Bison Boots via the link in the description. Check out their regular boots via the link in the description. And check out the JK 300 boot we did, where if this boot's out of your price range, they also have boots under 400 bucks that are basically built the same way, which is pretty wild. So thank you guys. Uh, it's a dream job, so if you're not subscribed, help uh, help the channel out by subscribing, supporting the sponsors, because uh, that's how we do this thing. So thank you guys. See ya. No.